Welcome to track number 18 of What is Your Life? Let's turn again to Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 32. And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah. Amen. Of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets. Now, time itself would fail us if we want to see all the great things our great example setters did when they were around. But there are one or two people that we need to watch carefully. And I want us to look at a gentleman called Jephthah in Judges chapter 11. Jephthah. His story is a story of faith. He included himself. Are you in Judges? Let's read from Judges chapter 11 verse 1. It says, And Jephthah the Gileadite was a mighty man of valor, and he was the son of an harlot. (laughs) Minus one. No matter your background, God can and will use you. How many believe that God is going to use you to do His great works? No matter your background. Amen. And Gilead's wife bare him sons. Right? And his wife's sons grew up and they thrust out Jephthah. And said unto him, Thou shalt not inherit in our father's house, for thou art the son of a strange woman. (laughs) It's unfortunate. He, He was not wanted from day one. He said, All of us are children, our mothers are different, but your mother It's a harlot. Our father went to sleep with her and she became pregnant. No condoms. She became pregnant. And you are the you are the product of this experience. We don't want you to be uh, a a member of our family again. Go away. Then Jephthah fled from his brethren and dwelt in the land of Tob. And there were gathered vain men to Jephthah and went out with him. Jephthah went to start his church and the people who joined were useless people. (laughs) Initially in your ministry you have sometimes very young people, students, uneducated, the, the races that are unwanted, despised and they will come and they will listen. And they will be he- they will be blessed when they come. Verse four. And it came to pass in the process of time that the children of Ammon made war against Israel. And it was so that when the children of Ammon made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to fetch Jephthah out of the land of Tob. And they said unto Jephthah, Come and be our captain, that we may fight with the children of Ammon. They knew the importance of having the right leader. They didn't just say, we want to fight, but you be our captain in this fight. You see, who is your leader makes a lot of difference to how your life goes. You may have very, very, very good legs, very good heart, very good blood circulation, and you may be very good at running. 
your heart rate will be even very low because you are such a good athlete. But then if your mind is not working well, when they bend down and they say, on your marks, get set, go! Then you said I start laughing. <laughs> and then people are going on the race. And you've got very good legs. You've got a very good heart. Very amazing. On your marks, on your marks, get set, <laughs> and then you start laughing. And the people are gone. Because the mind is not working well. You start laughing at the wrong time. You start thinking about the wrong things at the wrong time. And the, and the people go, after they've gone for some time, <laughs> then you start running for them. Everything is perfect, but the head is not working well. So what your leader is can cancel out every thing that you are. And that's why they said, we, we can fight. We are the masters of the army, but we want a good captain. And we know that Jephthah is a good captain. And they were humble enough to go and call him, even though they had thrown him out. Some of you must be humble enough to go back for things that you have rejected. It takes humility to be great in God's kingdom. The greatest people always take a step of humility. If you are not prepared to be humble, God will not be able to work with you. Amen. Where are we? Come and be our captain. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, Did not ye hate me and expel me out of my father's house? Why are you come? Unto me now when you are in distress. And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah. Therefore we turn again to thee now. That thou mayest go with us. And fight against the children of Ammon. And be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead. If you bring me home again. To fight. Against the children of Ammon. And the Lord deliver them before me. Shall I be your head? And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, The Lord be witness between us. If we do not so if we do not so according to thy words, then then what happened? What verse is that? Then Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and captain over them, and Jephthah uttered all his words before the Lord in Mispah. Now why why is this guy name added? To, to what? To the guys who had a good report with their short life on earth. Why? Why is Jephthah's name added? We are going to see. Keep reading. Verse 12. And Jephthah sent messengers unto the king of the children of Ammon, saying, What hast thou to do with me that thou art come? Against me defied in my land. And the king of Israel and Ammon said unto the messengers. Because Israel took away my land. They came out of Egypt. Now therefore restore those lands again peaceably. Verse 14. And Jephthah sent messengers again unto the king of the children of Ammon. And said unto him. Thus saith Jephthah. Israel took not away the land of Moab. Nor the land of the children of Ammon. But the children... But when the children of Israel came out of Egypt and walked through the wilderness unto the Red Sea and came to Kadesh, then Israel sent messages unto the king of Edom saying, I pray thee, let me pass through. And he negotiated and verse 18, and they went along the wilderness and compassed the land of Edom and the land of Moab and came by the east side of the land of Moab. Verse 19, and Israel sent messengers unto Sihon, king of the Amorites. And Israel said unto him, Let us pass, we pray thee, through thy land. But Sihon trusted not Israel to pass through his coast. But Sihon rather gathered all his people together and pitched in Jahaz and fought against Israel. And the Lord God of Israel delivered Sihon and all his people into the hand of Israel. And they smote them. So Israel possessed all the land of the Amorites and the inhabitants of that country. Now, this was a good leader. You see, he's trying not to go to war. He's trying not to fight. Anybody who has sense will try not to fight. Husbands and wives, if you have any sense about you, you will try not to fight. You try to have peace. It's always better. 
Amen. Amen. It's good. It's better. It's a better way forward. Sometimes you should be peaceful. Amen. Some years ago I was in secondary school and I used to fight quite a bit in those days. And one day I met somebody whose eye had been cut. I think the eye had been cut like this and pierced. And when I saw him, you know, because I had just come out of a fight and, and my eye was black. You know, when you say a black eye, I had a real black eye because I had had a blue right on my eye. You know, when I saw this guy whose eye was cut off or cut out or whatever, I thought about it and I said, man, what about if this had happened to my eye, you know, because of this foolish person? So from that day, I decided not to fight. And from that time, I didn't fight. If you do, I will, I will just look at you like, I will not fight with you. Because sometimes it's wisdom not to fight. Not bravery or boldness, but stupidity makes us fight certain fights. Amen. Amen. Alright, verse 23. So now the Lord God of Israel has dispossessed the Amorites. Verse 24. Will not thou possess that which Chemosh thy God giveth thee to possess? (laughs) He's advising a guy to take what his gods have given him. So whomsoever the Lord our God shall drive out from before us, them will we possess. And now, are there anything better than Balak, the son of Zippor, the king of Moab? Did he ever strive against Israel, or did he ever fight against them? While Israel dwelt in Hezbon and her towns, all right, and all the cities that be along the coast of Arnon three hundred years, why therefore did you not recover them within that time? Wherefore I have not sinned against thee, but thou doest me wrong to war against me. That the Lord, the judge, be judged this day between the children of Israel and the children of Ammon. Howbeit the king of the children of Ammon hearkened not unto the words of Jephthah which he sent him. Amen. Amen. Verse 29. Then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah. You see, this is where the faith begins to happen. Notice. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah, and he passed over Gilead and Manasseh, and passed over Mizpeh and Gilead, and from Mizpeh of Gilead he passed over unto the children of Ammon, the thirty. And Jephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord, and said, If thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Ammon into mine hands, then it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth of the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the children of Ammon shall surely be the Lord's and I will offer it up for a burnt offering huh? (laughs) you see he was making a vow he said if God will help me then I promise God that when I come back home, whatever comes out of my house, the doors, first, I will burn that thing as an offering to God. Huh? God said, okay. It's a deal. <laughs> it's a deal. So I'll, I'll give you the children of Ammon. Look at verse 32. See, these are why people enter the books. His name is there. You don't know, you know, even it's not so famous to you, but his name is there. May our names be added one day. So Jephthah passed over the children of Ammon to fight against them, and the Lord delivered them into his hand. And he smote them from Aroa, even until you come to Minif, even twenty cities, and unto the plain of the vineyards, with a very great slaughter. Thus the children of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. And Jephthah came to Mizpeh unto his house. And behold, his daughter came out to meet him with timbrels and with dances. And she was his only child. And beside her he had neither son nor daughter. (laughs) 
And it came to pass that when he saw her, that he rent his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, thou hast brought me very low. And thou art one of them that trouble me. For I have opened my mouth unto the Lord. Underline that. I have opened my mouth unto the Lord. And I cannot go back. I have opened my mouth unto the Lord and I cannot go back. I have opened my mouth unto the Lord and I cannot go back. I cannot go back. Oh God. When he saw his death, he said, oh no, no, no. It it cannot be. It cannot be. It is not possible. No, he said he had one child, he had neither son nor daughter. He had only one child. And the child, is, that is the child who came out of the door. And when he saw, he said, Ma, and the, the daughter came out dancing. Daddy, 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 daddy. And she was, she was told me why her father was shocked. Because his father. Her father was a man of faith. Her father was a man whose name was about to be recorded in heaven's annals. Her father was a man who would be recorded as someone who had a good report. Because of his belief. What he believed. He said, my God. My God. Anything but this one. Even if it was his wife, I could have married another one. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't have any other child. And she said unto him, My father, if thou hast opened thy mouth unto the Lord, do to me according to that which proceedeth out of thy mouth. For as much as the Lord has taken vengeance for thee of thine enemies, even of the children of Ammon. And she said unto her father, Let this thing be done for me. One request. Let me alone for two months, that I may go up and down upon the mountains and bewail my virginity, I and my fellows. She didn't have a child. She didn't. She was a virgin. If you are going to die, it's like when you die, you didn't have a child. You were just there. You died without bringing forth anything to the world. You get it? So let me go and mourn and bewail the fact that I, I came into this world and I left this world as a virgin, never married, never had a child. Let me go with my friends for two months. To go and cry. And he said go. And he sent her away for two months. And she went with her companions. And bewailed her virginity upon the mountains. And it came to pass at the end of two months. That she returned unto her father. Who did with her. According to his vow. Which he had vowed. And she knew no man. And it was a custom in Israel. That the daughters of Israel went yearly to lament the daughter of Jephthah the Gileadite four days in a year. Huh? It's a very wild story. How many realize that this story is very wild? This is a very wild story. Louisa, do you see the, do you see the commitment? I mean, this is how, you know, and this one, you're just praying. You're just praying and you're saying, Lord, if you deliver me, if you bless me, I'm going to war, I'm going to battle. If you give me, when I come back, anything that comes out of the door, 
Ah, I'll give it to you. Now, when you are coming back, then you say, and the teacher goes, oh, you know, I was very emotional. I didn't think about it so well. I mean, I, of course I meant it, but I didn't mean it in that literal way. <laughs> you see, this is the difference between those who enter the book and those who don't enter. Those who have the good report. And if you were here on the first day, either the first day or the second day, I made an altar call. And I said, how many of you want to be pastors? Decide that you are going to be a pastor. Come forward, let me pray with you. Out of those people who came, some are going to say, and are going to remember, and are going to say, I told the Lord that I will be a pastor. However, when I look at certain things, The way things are going, certain things are not as I thought they would be. I'm sorry, I can't do it. Amen. Amen. Many of you here have vowed in your heart, Lord, Lord, I want to serve you. Lord, I want to do. And when the time comes to pay the price according to you, every high calling has a price. Every high calling has a price. Amen. That's a price. Most Christians run away from any kind of price pain. Pay a price. Nah. Nah. Blessed be the God of even to come to the camp. Blessed be the God of shame. Let me, let me share with you a little lesson here. I'm taking you from Jephthah to Shem. Do you know Shem? Noah had three children. Je- Jephthah, 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 Ham, and Shem. One day, listen, careful. One day, they all had come out of the ark. And Noah was happy. I told you, he was, Noah was one of the heroes. But he had a problem with drinking. <laughs> he, he would drink and he would be naked. One day I had a, a, a friend, I mean, in actually mother school. And after school he drank so much. And he took off all his clothes on the games field. He took off all his clothes on the games field. In, in secondary school. Or in high school or whatever you call it. He took off or totally naked like a banana. Took completely. <laughs> huh? Noah had the same problem. He was a man and a hero of faith. The hero of faith, the heroes of faith, I keep trying to emphasize to you. You try to keep being good. Keep looking down on us and on everybody. Keep keep mocking. Keep pointing to people's difficulties and their failures and that pastor and that person and he's like this and she's like that and that is like that and keep on. People are being marked up seriously in heaven. Anyway, so Noah had this problem. He liked alcohol. So one day he drank and he removed all his clothes in his <laughs> drunkenness. You know some people they they get they, what what do they, they call it? When they get the drink and then they go wild. What, what's the name of that? Delirium. Is it a delirium tremens? What was that? A, a colleague. Like some, is it not the delirium tremens where they can take over a party? They can take over a party and do things and then in the, the morning when they, they don't remember anything. Alcoholic blackout. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Pathological intoxication. <laughs> <laughs> what the delirium is when some animals are chasing them? 
And that's the withdrawal. And that's when they withdraw. So that's pathological intoxication. They can take over. They don't remember anything afterwards. Yeah. So Noah, Noah had these difficulties. You get it? <laughs> so one day, because if you are drinking, right, just drink and get drunk. But how did your clothes go off? How? People laughed at A. Allen. People said all sorts of things about A. Allen when he died. He died as a drunkard. He did this. He did that. He did that. Great man of God. All sorts of things. I could tell you one of the stories about how he died. I've never read any story reading and I cry. Except the story of when A. A. Allen died. It is the first time I read that I read it. And when I read that, I, said that I just burst out crying on my bed. That has never happened to me before. But as I read it, I, I could understand and relate with the man of God. A broken man who has worked for God in all sorts of experiences that he, that he was going through. But you would have Christians pointing, 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 pointing. By the way, Noah was just like that. So one day, one of his things came and he was boozed. He took off all his clothes, was misbehaving, then he slept. Now he had tried to hide it from his children. But one day, the way he was sleeping, he forgot to close the door. So, so one of the children came by Ham. And when he saw, he said, What? Look at daddy. He always tells us, Do this, do this, do this. Come. And he called the other people, Come and see how he's sleeping. He has opened his legs like that, more than the Tower of Liberty. He's just lying there. So, he went and called Japheth and Shem. There were only three of them. And remember that there was no, there's nobody else on earth. Only these three and Noah. Their wives. Nobody else in the whole world. It's just like the story of Adam and Eve. Nobody else on the world apart from Adam and Eve. So whatever happened to these three means it's happening to the whole world. Yeah. Whatever happened to these three is what's happening to the whole wide world. Listen carefully. I've taken you from Jephthah, I'm coming to Shem. And we'll go back to Jephthah. By faith, they obtained a good report. Now, what, what happened to Jeph, uh, 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 Ham? He called these guys, and the guys said, It's not right to laugh at your father. It's not right, and so on. And some of us will know, oh, uh, The old man is a stupid man, he's a fool, he's a fool, he's a drunkard. And we are not into such things. And the older generation have problems. And so on. But what Ham forgot was that if Noah had not built the ark, for him to come inside and to be there for all those forty days, and if he had not had faith to build that ark, he Ham would not have been alive and standing there to laugh at his father. Exactly. That's what he forgot. That he would not even have been there around to be laughing at his father. Careful now. I said, careful now. careful now. So, Japheth and Shem did not like the idea. So they came and the Bible says they went backwards into the tent. And then they covered their father. I don't even want to see. One day I was talking to a man of God about another man of God and so on, about some problems. And he said, I, he said, I don't even want to know the problem. And he said, I, I don't want to see my father's nakedness. <laughs> That's what he said, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see my father's nakedness. I don't even want to know about the problem. That's what he says. I don't want to see my father's snake. It will not help me. He said, it will not help me if I see my father's snake. <laughs> I've never heard anybody use that expression before, but I heard this man of God use that. He said, I, I don't even want to know because it will not help me if I see my father's nakedness. He said, it will not help me. Yeah, just as it did not help him. And Japheth and Shem decided that they also didn't want to see. Just have it. It's, it's beyond us. You see, as far as God was concerned, Noah was already settled with a good report. It's these foolish boys who were just about to destroy their lives on something that they don't understand. So, when Noah woke up, I don't know how it came out, but somebody was telling that the other day when he slept, the door was open. Ham came there and he was laughing. He made some calls on his mobile phone to, to tell the others. And when the others came, they didn't like it and they didn't agree with him and they walked backwards and they covered it. 
And Noah stood up as a father. You must fear when your father is going to say certain things. <clears throat> One day I talked to a certain lady, sister. I talked to her. I said, look, I talked to you. And then I took a bottle of water. I started to wash my I said, I, I, I finished. And she started crying. She was afraid. I said, I, I finished talking with you. And she said, what am I doing? But you see, when your father is washing his hand off you and dashing you to the wind, how oh man, <laughs> you should pray about it. So don't get to that point. So, a time came when he was under the spirit. All these people spoke by faith. And he blessed Japheth. He said, Japheth, you will be greatly enlarged. God shall enlarge Japheth. Then, he spoke about Shem. And he said, Blessed be the God of Shem. Blessed be the God of Shem. And Ham shall save him. Then, he went to Ham. And he said, A servant of servants shall thou be. These three words have determined in fact, explain the world today. I'll show you. It is please, if you just want understanding and wisdom, you can read the Bible and understand it. Who is Japheth? Anybody who has a Bible, if you have any Bible which has references on it, you check who were the children of Japheth. Japheth's children, where they are. Japheth's children are the Europeans. One of them is Gog and Magog. The Russians, Europeans, and so on, who have also occupied America and mainly the Europeans and those type of people, some of the Asians and so on. Of course, there are a lot of mixtures and exceptions, but generally, these are very, very general with exceptions. Who was Shem? Shem were the Middle Eastern people. And who was Ham? The Libya, it was the children of Libya, Egypt, Ethiopia, Sudan, the black people. Algeria, and then coming down. From these three, the whole world came out. Now, when you look at these three groups, generally, of course, there are exceptions, because even when you look at the children, you realize that there are some mix-ups, and there are some difference. This one is here, this one is here, this one is here, this one is here. So, they are gen- they are, these are very general. But when you look at Japheth, they are the enlarged races of this world. They are the rich, the wealthy, those who have built bridges, world trade centers, Tunnels, aeroplanes, cars, what have you, all over the world. They occupied Britain. At the end of the last century, Britain was the superpower of the world. Almost the whole world was ruled by one little island. Greatly enlarged. Germany, Holland, we have places in Holland. We have names in Ghana, which are Dutch names. Peterson, Hutchison, Van Dyck, Van der Poy, uh, 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 all the sins, all the sins, some of these sins. Blank sins, Will sins, River sins, Richard sins. These are not Ghanaian, these are Dutch names, Portuguese names, Van Dyck, Lindsay. <laughs> They, 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 they occupied Ghana. They, if you drive along the coast, you see we have more than 50 different castles and forts occupied there by the enlarging races as they came to arrest the others. <laughs> then you look at Ham. Who are Ham's children? The black. What, what, what can you say about black people generally? The basic thing you can say is that they are servants of servants. Worldwide servants. This story is told. Uh, three people came to the door of heaven and when they got there, one was a Japanese and they asked him, what is he doing here? He said, oh, he has built a video, television, some uh, Sony, everything, uh, uh, cars, and so on. He said, okay, you can come in. Then, uh, here came the European man. He said, what have you said? He had built all these great cities in the world and 
invaded this and built so many things. He said, okay, come. And then here came the African uh, man and he said, what, what, what do you want here? He said, oh, I was just carrying their bags. <laughs> 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 said, no, 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 I was just carrying their bags. <laughs> but, but listen, listen, understand the curse. The curse, generally speaking, was not a curse for lack of intelligence. But it was a curse against leadership. It was a curse against, and that is what you find all in Africa. You find that it's not that there are no intelligent people. The UN Secretary General is a Ghanaian. And there are Ghanaian, very good Ghanaian doctors, scientists, what have you. We, they fit in everywhere. Nigeria, black people from they fit in and they are as able and as capable as anybody else. But if you go to the country where they've been left to rule, you will be afraid. <laughs> you cannot stay there. That's why people leave. Because if you under that kind of leadership, you tremble. A road will not be built. There's no road to my house. And my, my house has been there, that, those area, that area has been there for about 20, 30 years. Isn't it? That's handy, isn't it? So when is there going to be a road in my lifetime? I'm not expecting any road in my, in my lifetime. That there's a road that goes to my house. Sometimes when I'm going home, it's like a safari. I can't go that because you go that you go that place. You know? <laughs> I had a car that it was scraped so much under. In the end, the under of the thing was cracked. And then the gearbox was so destroyed. Just by be going home. Just going home. Not, I wasn't going on a safari. Just home. <laughs> <laughs> and so people are running away from the leadership you know and sometimes I tell people in Ghana I say you imagine those people who stand on the roadside selling dog chains selling uh, katia burger selling uh, uh, rice selling uh, uh, dusters selling uh, whatever and all these things those who stand on the roadside imagine that they are now put in charge of the nation come out of the fine ministry of finance, the council, the government, they should just go and rule us. Imagine how the country will be like. That's what you understand when you say that servants are ruling the whole place. If ever you go to South Africa, you'll understand. Those in South Africa, they don't, they don't know. Now, when you come, when you go to South Africa, you see the difference. South Africa is nicer than America. Oh, far nicer than America to me. Oh, it's a different kind of place. It's nicer than England, Europe, because it was built after. So they built it with more plants. And it's Africa. It's, it is the wild with the animals and with everything. It's so beautiful. You can't imagine that it's the same kind of place. But with a different kind of leader. For 40, if you say apartheid was not good, can you see what independence has done? <laughs> For the same period of time, 45 years of independence and 45 years of apartheid. The difference is like heaven and hell. So brothers and sisters, generally speaking, you find out that that is the pattern all over. When I go among pastors and ministers and so on, I mean, uh, you see that among, among international, they don't respect, they don't respect us, even in the church. Even in the church. On Sunday morning, rarely will you get a white man sitting in a black man's church. The Sunday morning hour is the most segregated hour in the whole of America. It's the most segregated hour. Rarely will you get... Rarely, everybody goes into his own little community. It is not common. It is not common. It takes a special gift to be able to do that. And they are not, they are not respected. When I, when, I, when I meet with some of these great American pastors and so on from different parts of the world, I meet them in, in Korea and so on. I mean, it's like, they don't, 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 don't even want to talk to you. It's like, I mean, this African guy and this African, uh, what do you call it, hungry, he must need something, he wants money, he's a beggar. They see us as hewers of wood, car, pushers of carts, carriers, carriers of water, drawing water. That's how we are seen. And I don't blame them. I don't blame them because what have we done for ourselves 
And even when we have our own church, we fight each other. We die, we fight the pastor. We try to destroy him. And p- destroy and pull him down. One day I met a man from a, 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 a man who's married to somebody, you know, a Swiss, a Swiss lady. And that man comes from one of these South American countries. And he was telling, he was telling a story. He said they have a, a joke among themselves. I said, what is that joke? He said, oh, there's a, a, a man had two sacks. One of the sacks, alright, is full of crabs on this side. And the other sack, sack was full of crabs. And uh, the sack on the left was full of white crabs. You get it? And the other sack was full of black crabs. And then, as the guy was moving, he said, Ah, this sack is, is closed. The white crab, the white uh, crab with the white sack is closed. And the bag with the black crabs is, is, is open. And he asked, Why? He said, Oh, if I open the bag with the white crabs, they will all come out one by one. They will climb out and come. But if I, as I've opened the bag with a black hat, none will come out. <laughs> because they will pull e- each other down. Nobody will be allowed to come out. It's a South American joke. We, we, we don't want anybody to, we don't want our pastor to have this casa. What, when I went to his house, I saw him replacing his remote. And so his television is bigger than mine. <laughs> what kind of thinking do you have in your mind? A car that I don't even have the car that he drives and I give offerings and all kind of crabic mentality. Desperate survival type of mind. Like T.D. Jakes told uh, Bishop Dagon, they are surrounded by desperate people. Desperate people are dangerous people. That's why I don't invite church members to my house. I don't encourage church members to come to my house. Do not come to my house. Just see me at the church. So, first Bishop, we want to come to your house. We want to help you to, we want to clean your house. When you clean my house for me or you feel, then you go and say, ah! The thing that we see. One person, he came to a pastor's house. And after he, he said, he said, ah, I will never pay tithe again. <laughs> he said, I will never pay tithe again. In Ghana. Because he saw a satellite dish in the pastor's house and he saw that in the pastor's house and he saw that gadgets and so on. He said, I will never pay tithes again. Me. I will never pay tithes again. <laughs> anyway, back to Ham. So, that is, a, that is a situation. Now, that's one group. Japheth, Ham. Shem. Blessed be the God of Shem. That one too, what does it mean? Kodolin said, what does it mean? Blessed be the God of Shem. What does it mean? It means that the God of Shem is blessed. Not Shem, the God of Shem is blessed. What does it mean the God of Shem is blessed? It means that if you are blessed, it means it's good for you. It means you are lucky. It means you are to be envied. Who is to be envied? The God of Shem. Why? Because when Shem serves God, the way Shem would serve God, God would be very happy. In fact, Shem's God is lucky to have Shem serving him. Why? Because of the way Shem will serve him. That's right. That's right. And the passion and the faith and the commitment with which Shem would serve, Shem's God is a lucky God to have Shem. As his God. Maybe Ham's God may not have it that way. Or Japheth's God may not have it that way. And that is why out of Shem have come all the major religions. You know the genealogy of Jesus Christ. You from Afaxad, you come to Shem. And Shem like that. And through that genealogy, when you read Matthew, the genealogy of Christ come through Shem. Noah, Shem, and it's coming. All the major religions came from that place. Islam. The, the, the religions that affect the world. They are from there. They are from Shem because and, and and those religions are prominent, forceful religions because that group of people, the way they believe things, <laughs> it is different from if a Ham Ham believes. It's different from when a Japheth believes. And that is why. And yes, and you see, even though the Islamic, the way they believe what they believe, just like the Christian for Christ. You see, Christ Jesus did what these hijackers did. In the sense that he knew he was going to die. He knew they were going to kill him. He walked 
to his death. I was reading the news week and I was looking through the hijack. They showed the pictures of the hijackers in Walmart the night before. They went shopping. They're just going, walking through there. They videoed them. They took pictures of them. This one coming through. Just They're just walking around. Just cool. Drive their car. They went to buy gas. They filmed them at the gas station. They took pictures of them. All those pictures were in the news week and I was just reading through. I said, wow. It's like you have people who believe and it's like their culture is that they believe to the point that they will die. That's why the God of that person is lucky to have It's like you have people who believe and it's like their culture is that they believe to the point that they will die. That's why the God of that person is lucky to have such a person. Such followers. Wild. So when the Shem people start believing, oh man, whichever religion it is. If you read about the Mujahideen, the Taliban, the people in people have traveled from Britain all over to Afghanistan to fight against America in Afghanistan. People who live in Britain, I mean their faith is very, very, very wild. Very, very, very wild. And you see, it, it makes people say that you know, people will be put off Islam because of this attack. Many people are rather attracted to Islam because of the attack. They feel that something that people can die for and believe so much in, there must be something in it. But the, the sons of Japheth and Ham, they, they want to live. <laughs> they, they want money. <laughs> they have to go to that. Let me survive. I don't want to die. And they, they have a belief in the future, in heaven. That's why their Christianity, their faith is very different. Peter and all these people, they died. The Jews, they died for what they believe. That's why they say, blessed be the God of Shem. Hey, of Shem's God there. He'll be blessed because of his, his, the way his line and his passion for God. Blessed be the God of Shem. And Ham shall serve him. May we receive the faith of Shem. Amen. May our God be lucky to have people like Amen. us. Amen. How many would like God to, God to say, I'm, I'm lucky to have people like Dr. North who, who worked for me. I'm blessed to have such people. I'm blessed to have somebody like you. Who is so believes. Look at Jephthah. You can go and say, Lord, anything that comes out of the door when I come back home. I'll burn it. I'll kill it. I'll offer it. When he comes back, he doesn't say, oh, I was emotional. Most of us, when we pledge, we don't pay. When I was in Maryland this year, were there a lot of pledges? Did you get the money? The lot of the money? Pardon? I haven't got it all. Are there a lot that you haven't got? Quite a number. Pardon? Some people started and never continued. Yeah. Some people started and never continued. They are not like Jephthah. Uh, Jephthah. Jephthah, Jephthah there, even his daughter, he had neither son nor daughter. Only one person, a daughter. And he put the daughter. Daughter, come. Please lie on the... No, no, I didn't say kneel down. I said lie. lie. No, the other way, the other way, the other way around. You see, oh, even just to lie, you say, oh, oh. somebody is going to burn. Somebody is going to lie, lie, lie on the floor. Let, let's get the firewood. And let's burn her. We kill her. You get it? Move the, move the stage from here. We are going to kill her. You get it? And then we are going to burn her. And then first time, you get it? You don't have a wife anymore. Have you got a lighter? We we'll burn her. We we'll kill her. Why? Because when we were going to church, we said, Lord, whatever you tell me today, I will do it. Lord, what I'm hearing at this time, Lord, I believe I will do it. And when he came back, after so many battles, he conquered 20 cities. Think of how long it takes to conquer 20 cities. Think of how much time passes from the time you open your mouth till 20 cities have been conquered. And you come back and you still... Remember, and when you see your daughter, you remember the pledge that you made. Because you are a man of beliefs. In even the words that you say, and the things that you say with your mother, I will do, I will do, 
I believe, I will do. How many of us have killed our callings? Have prevented ourselves from obeying God? Because, because when the time comes for implementation, we, we draw back and we give various reasons. We rationalize things and we stay, we stay back and we say, uh, it's just an idea, you know, that, you know, things are not as, uh, what do you call it? Bishop, the way he preaches, I'm always convinced. That I, I, I feel that the preaching was too strong on, on that day. At that time. But when I moved out and I began to think about it. Oh, here she is. We are going to burn her. Put some firewood on her. That's your, your daughter. She's going. We light the fire. Because of the words you spoke and you believe. That's, that's faith. That's me. How different we are from people who really believe. It's just your belief that makes things to make you so different. Look at me. Pain, look at me preaching. I'm not a better preacher than you, Pain. I'm not a better person than you. You're a better person than me. Yeah, you're a better person than me. Do you understand? <laughs> you are. And look at me, and it's like, I believe. You see, and I'm doing what I'm doing. Not that I'm, I'm great or I'm better. But I believe. What, in what I'm saying, in what I'm doing. Otherwise, I would not be standing here. If I was trying to preserve my life, I would not come here. No, 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 no. Not, that, not for a moment. I will not travel anymore. I got a very safe life in Ghana. Are very safe things to do. It's true. I've traveled, I've traveled, I've traveled, I've almost died. I've been in two planes which aborted their landing as they landed to avoid collision. I've been in a plane that was landing at Kotoka International Airport and just as we touched down, just as we were just about to, I was sitting by the window, not more than a meter from the ground and the pilot took the plane and whoo! And I became scared. And I said, Lord, what is happening now? Because we were landing. We were just, that has never happened before. Hmm. Why? And there was silence in the plane. Everybody was afraid. And then after some time, we were very high up again. And I, I looked down and I saw the airport down there. I said, Lord, we are going down there. That's where we are going. Why are we, why are we up here? You're going down. We're landing. I saw the airport as though I was now leaving the airport and I was traveling to Europe or America. That's how the plane took and went back up and I saw the airport. I said, Lord, this is a terrible thing that has happened. My wife is waiting for me. I'm in the plane. Please, Lord, let the plane come back. And I, I have never experienced it. I don't know what can make a plane that we were landing. Just go back up. Oh, man, you can't imagine that. And I, I said that this is it now. This is it. This is it. It's over. And I was just thinking. I watch a, I watch a documentary. It's called Flights from Hell. Flights from Hell. Different experience. I saw a place where the undercarriage didn't come out. And I thought, I mean, that must be the most likely. The, the, the wheels they didn't come out. What had happened was there was a car right in front of the plane. And the pilot said he had to take the plane up. Otherwise they would have collided. I was landing at Heathrow Airport. This is not Ghana, so it must be the sons of Japheth building airports. And we were landing like that, just as we were landing. This was in the daytime. That was the night. This was the day. I could see I was watching. And I said, Lord, this one I know that there's no car on the runway. This is Heathrow Airport. One of the biggest airports in the whole wide world. You know what the pilot announced after some time? He announced, he said that there was a plane. There was another plane in front of him. He was about to crash into the plane. And he had to abort the landing. I've been there twice. I've been in a car that had an accident. Terrible accident. Driving. I was just playing my music, driving. I told the people, brothers and sisters, we are soon going to arrive in Tamale 
I was driving from north, 750 kilometers from the south of Ghana to the north of Ghana. I was driving. And I just changed the music. New car, nice car. Pastor Kakra from Kumasi was sitting behind me. Jason from Canada was sitting behind me. My little sister, other Pastor Jonathan were there. I said, 30 minutes more. No car on the way. No car behind us. Smooth road. Perfect road. Nothing bad can happen. And then there I saw a bicycle man in front of me. And the man was already on the side. I said, you know, let me just encourage the man. Let's just remind him that I am coming. Let me encourage him to just move a bit to the side. So I blew my horn. I'm coming. I know what the bicycle man did. Instead of moving, he just turned around to see what was coming. And then he, he moved his bicycle into the middle of the road to cross to go to the other side. And here I was coming full speed towards him. And here he was right in front of me. And I had to break. This is a car with ABS. The ABS was supposed to work, but ABS did not work. And you know, hmm, Korean ABS. I was saving, I was saving, I was saving $20,000 for the church. When I bought that car, it was $20,000 cheaper than the car I should have bought. And I said, oh, I'm saving $20,000. That $20,000 may have been my funeral money. That's why I don't listen to all those junk anymore. <laughs> and then our car hit the side of his. I had to avoid hitting the guy. We would have gone over him and made him into mincemeat. We hit the side of the, of the bicycle. Like that. And then there, our car, the, the road was elevated by this, uh, this much. And we were going over into the hill. So I turned the car this way. When I turned the car to come back to the road, the car turned round back towards Accra. Accra. And then it started to skid this way. And there was a big hole on the other side. Then we fell into the hole. And we started summers. Oh, have you been in summers? Oh, it's nice. You just be turning. <laughs> turning. Turning. <laughs> Amen. I could not believe it. There. And I said, Lord, it's not happening. I was holding the steering. We're turning. Turning. The car was rolling. Like that. And suddenly we came to an end and we were upside down. And the whole car was crying. Here, look, cut, cut. blood was dropping from the roof. I said, Are you there? And my sister started crying. Then I knew that she was there. <laughs> Are you there? Are you there? Are you there? <laughs> now, I realized that everybody was there. They thought I was there because I was, I was just holding this chair. <laughs> but I was still alive. I said, that we have to come out. Now the car has rolled. All the cars, the doors were mashed. You can't come out of any side. And then now the car started to smoke was coming out of them. It was like it was going to explode or burn or whatever. And we had a sunroof. So we started to come out of the sunroof and we came out. Pastor Kakra stood by the car and he said, In fact, if, if I had died, I would have been very surprised. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the next time I was going back to Tamale, I had to really brace myself and... The, the, I said, there's nothing like a near-death experience. If you've not experienced one before, you don't know what it is about. When you almost die, there's a feeling that you have. And I had to control myself. I mean, to drive on some of those journeys. When we got, when we got to Tamale, the guy told us, oh, you are lucky. The white man, he was sitting in his office, smoking his cigarette. So, you guys are very lucky. He said, you would have been one of the statistics. He said, when we have accidents here, we don't send ambulances. We send tipper trucks to collect bodies. <laughs> oh, yeah. He said, one person dies here every day on this road. I said, why don't you make a signboard for people to slow down? He said, that's not my job. My job is to build a road. Huh. It takes faith in God even to live in a certain way. 
And many of you sit in your safety and your comfort. And you will not even encourage those who are doing it. By even paying your tithes, just only your tithes, to encourage the work that is going on. Or even come up with ideas to help without being asked. So that people feel so encouraged. There's nothing like that, I tell you. You feel encouraged. You feel people really see what you are doing. And how, how they can help you. But I see a new spirit coming. Yeah. That's why I said, blessed be the God of Shem. Because Shem's God. Wild God. Wild, wildly blessed. So here's the daughter of Jephthah. Jephthah. She's about to be burnt. And you know what? When even somebody has been cremated. The vice president of Ghana died recently. A former vice president. He was cremated. And I saw it on a ship. They took him to the vice president, former vice president. And his, he was in a little bottle. And they took him to sea and they poured him out. And I saw that this is the vice president who is being poured out like this. Into the dust. Into the sea. Even when a person is dead. And you are cremating him. You feel bad about it. How much more Barbara is alive. And we are, we are cremating her. And offering her. He said he did according to his vow. So you. He said you'll be a pastor. Let's see you. Living up to it. You said you preach. Let's see you doing it. You said you pray. Let's see you doing it. You said you would give. Let's see you doing it. Let's see you doing the things you said you would do. Let's see you living up to your word. Some people said they were going to give an amount every month to help. You stopped. You started. You stopped. Because it just three months passed. And then, unlike Jephthah or Jephthah, you stopped. But Jephthah, no. Jephthah remembered. This is what I said I would do. I'm doing it. I made it recently. I made it. Thank you. I made a covenant... Let me help you. Gently. You see, Jephthah's daughter didn't have this privilege of getting up there. <laughs> Recently, I made a covenant. You know, I wanted to really do something for the Lord. So I said, Lord, I'm going to make a covenant. I've never made a covenant with the Lord. I haven't made any covenant. I don't like such things. Especially because of people like Jephthah and the problems they had. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. I don't like such things much. So, I made a covenant with the Lord. And I said, Lord, I'm making a covenant with you to start 1,000 churches in Ghana. I will do it. And I felt that it would tie me to really be committed. And it has. I've grown very wild. I'm very determined. I'm training. I'm teaching. I'm doing it. I said, Lord, 1,000 churches. I'm not the first pastor who said it. I know a pastor some years ago, he came on the scene, very big church. He said he was going to establish 1,000 churches in Ghana. But I thought I should start 1,000. But he's no more so much into that sort of thing. But I said, Lord, let me do it. How many want me to fulfill my covenant with the Lord? How many are going to help me? Say, Bishop, we want to strengthen your hand. Amen. We want to strengthen your hand. To do the work. I want to start a hundred churches in America. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred churches. One hundred churches. So that when we are going around, we, we don't even know where to go. We don't even know where to go. We don't even know where to go. We go here, there's a church. We go here, there's a church. We go here, there's a church. Souls are being saved. We need to, uh, can, can we have Hispanic churches? Time will come. We have people, white churches, all kinds of churches, every kind. It's working. All nations. Hallelujah. All nations. Is there any problem in the front? Amen. Are you feeling hot? You're feeling cold? Amen. 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 How many here don't pay tithes? (laughs) 
If you don't pay tithes, give me a wave of your hand. Give me a wave. Okay. Do you want to pay tithes? You want to pay tithes? Okay. How many pay tithes? 10% of what the Lord gives you, you give it back to the Lord. Let me see. Okay. How many pay sometimes? You pay tithes sometimes. Not always. Rita, why? Sometimes you forget. I think next time I should forget to come for the camp. That's what happens. Keep postponing it. Yes. How many want to be like Jephthah today and decide I'm going to do it? I'm going to pay tithes. I'm going to give offerings. And I'm going to give special offerings whenever I need to. If you are here and you want to decide from today and be like Jephthah and say, Lord, I vow not anything extra, not 20%, not 30%, just your tithe. That's all that. Just do your tithe. Be faithful to the Lord with that. Apart from your offerings, if you want to determine and be very determined to do that from today. Stand up, let me pray with you. If you don't do it and you want to do it, stand. You don't do it. Yes, you have you must stand. Because you can you don't do it and you want to do it. You don't do it and you want to do it. Or you don't do it regularly, you want to do it regularly. Also stand. You do it, but you forget sometimes. You, you give less than 10%. <laughs> All those things are not tithes. I want you to stand. It's just a prayer. There are more, there are more, there are more. Stand up quickly in Jesus' name. Stand up quickly in Jesus' name. You, 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 pay, you pay partly, you pay sometimes. And you want to do it from now. Thank you, my sister. There are still some more. There are still some more. I want to help you. Because whether you pay your tithes or not, the church will not be affected at all. Can I assure you of that? But I want to pray with you. More are standing and they are standing slowly. So stand quickly now so that it's over. <laughs> it's like people think about it carefully. There's no thinking. What I've said is very clear. Anything that the Lord gives you, 10% is for God. Period. Let your hands pray. Father, I pray for these ones that are standing. On, on their behalf, Lord, I help them to make this agreement with you, Lord, that of all that you bless us with in this land, home of the brave, America, Lord, we will give you 10%. At least. To say thank you. And to show that we appreciate. Your good. And your kindness. We hope you have been blessed and transformed by this camp. To get the most out of it. You will need to listen to it over and over again. Make sure you listen to all the other camps in the Macanair. Don't forget to stop by our website at www org. Here you can download other messages, videos and find out about all the books and other resources available by Dyke Mills. May God bless you and your ministry.